Memoria is a 2021 film that's currently screening in theaters throughout the world indefinitely. I've seen the film twice, and it's become one of my favorites. It's a quiet, slow, contemplative film that somehow just as jam-packed with ideas as its stylistic opposite, everything, everywhere, all at once. There's a lot that can be discussed, but I'd like to share some observations that I've broken up into three categories. Much has been made about the overall sound design of the film, but what I'm referring to here is the loud boom that Jessica, played by Tilda Swinton, keeps hearing throughout the film. The noise that she tries describing to Hernan, the sound engineer. I mean, it, it probably sounds differently in my head. Although the film offers one possible explanation regarding the source of the sound, there's plenty of room to consider what that actually means. Is it a warning from our environment? Is it a signal from our primordial past? After all, Hernan does tell Jessica that the sound came before us. There may be a clue in the way the sound, which is pretty loud, functions in a film so quiet and transcendentally slow. It kind of serves the same function as the kaisaku in Zen meditation. The kaisaku is a flat wooden stick that a directing monk uses to slightly smack the meditator in order to keep him or her from drifting off or falling asleep. The booming sound in Jessica's head serves a similar practical purpose. Keeping the audience, especially viewers not used to the glacial pacing of slow cinema, awake and on track. The poster for Memoria features an image of a woman, presumably Jessica, apparently asleep and dwarfing the landscape like a giant using the mountainside as her pillow. It's a very similar image to this one from the 2013 film Under the Skin. Tilda Swinton in Memoria and Scarlett Johansson in Under the Skin are two very different actors giving two very different performances, but they are both alien incarnations, strangely disconnected from their environments and from other people. This is enhanced by their status as foreigners, Johansson in Glasgow and Swinton in Colombia. In interviews, director Apichapong Virasethakal has cited the 1943 film I Walked with a Zombie as providing some inspiration for Jessica, including her name. Jessica! And I'm reminded of other portrayals of aliens, ghosts, zombies, at odds with their surroundings and struggling with their not quite humanness. Is Jessica dead? A reasonable question when you consider Apichapong's other films. Or maybe she's an alien or just an earthling uncovering suppressed memories of her ancient alien roots. A self-confessed science fiction fan, Apachatpong may have dropped a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey as well, when Hernan tells Jessica how he can hear a monkey leader getting angry with the other monkeys that aren't following him. That may be a stretch, but then notions regarding evolution and humankind's relationship to the Earth permeate the film. In fact, the last few minutes play to me like the opening shots of 2001's Dawn of Man sequence, but in reverse, leaving us with a final shot of the terrain with no sign of human intervention. <laughs> Jessica interacts with two different men named Hernan, or maybe they're the same person. Hernan figures importantly in the film, especially the second one, who at one point explains that he can vividly remember every minute detail of every single moment that he's experienced his entire life. Everything everywhere all at once. It's a painful condition that keeps him in isolation in the countryside. Some commentators have compared Hernan's hyperthemesia to the Jorge Luis Borges story, Funes the Memorias in which the title character acquires the ability to remember absolutely everything after suffering head trauma. Hernan and Jessica establish a psychic connection where his memories seem to spill over into her mind, disturbing personal memories of South America's violent history. If you Google the name Hernan, 
The top result is Hernán Cortés, a Spanish conquistador who decimated the Aztecs in Mexico and expanded the Spanish Empire in the Americas. Colombia's own violent past is documented at the Museo Casa de la Memoria, located in the city of Medellín, where Jessica says that she has an orchid farm. Medellín, Spain, by the way, is the birthplace of Hernán Cortés. I don't know if any of this is intentional, but if not, they definitely seem like interesting little synchronicities, intersecting points in a compelling web of sights, sounds, and ideas. Maybe a Pitchapong's book, which chronicles the making of the film, will shed more light on his intentions. I almost hope it doesn't.